If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Dude, I can't believe uh, that I beat Robert at the... Uh Lifting contest we did earlier. Right, right after I beat him in armor. So that was that. amazing. <laughs> I know, and I out-squatted him. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. World's strongest man. Robert Oberst, uh, professional strongman. Our, and good, our good buddy. A good friend of ours. Yeah. What a he's great, a sweetheart. He's a very nice, yeah. <clears throat> jovial, happy, awesome, he's massive in, dude. He's in the inner circle. <laughs> we let him in the forum just the other day, man. He's part of the inner circle now. He's, he's our, a badass. He's our he, tribe. He's going to be competing in the 2018 World's Strongest Man competition, which is going to be held in Manila in the Philippines. The qualifiers are April 28th through May 1st, and the finals are May 5th through 6th. Uh, he's representing the U.S. of A. You got to see him, man. He's entertaining as hell. Last time I saw him compete, he was in, I don't remember where he was. It might have been in the U.K., yeah. And he came out in all like decked out American UK, flag yeah. and just talking shit and like got an booed. an American badass. Oh, it was yeah. so awesome. Well, he, he's got a killer Instagram, so you can go to his Instagram at Robert Oberst. So it's it's Robert and then Oberst is O-B-E-R-S-T. Uh, so he's got a good Instagram. You can go there. Check that out. That's right. Dude, so it, what's it, what, was his, what was his deadlift and bench press again? How much was it at? Uh, oh six, 600 over, I think it was like 650 was his top bench. His overhead press was close to 500 pounds. I mean- yeah, he's, he was telling us the log. He does the log like 400 something. Yeah, pound log pay over. close attention to the log press when he does that event. Yeah, he's competing he's in like the uh, world championship for yeah, that, right? Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah, he's going to do really well. He's he's as strong as uh, four Dugs. <laughs> so it's a lot of strength there. <laughs> uh, oh, also, isn't this the Gorilla final day? Power. It is the final day. This is the final day for MAPS HIT promotional sale price. So HIT is high intensity interval training. It's a MAPS program. We programmed it. This is the best fat-burning program we have. Six weeks long will blow your mind. If you enter the code HIT with two I's, launch, so it's H-I-I-T-L-A-U-N-C-H, you will get $20 off the sale price plus a free T-shirt. And this is the last opportunity to get that promotion. Go to mindpumpmedia.com. And without any further ado, here we are talking to the gentle giant, Robert Oberst. You know what I just, just happened right now? What? What? I handed uh, Robert his coffee. Yeah. And for a split second, our hands touched. He, he engulfed your hand. And our like hands a, like touched a little, a little. And I have, I legit have, compared to most people, like decently sized hands. In fact, I've been complimented on the masculinity and size of my <laughs> your hands. your big hands? Really? But I, I put my You've hand next to his. on that? Oh, yeah. My, I've gotten compliment hands many times. I put Ooh. my hand next to his and I felt like a child. Like little baby hands. <laughs> yeah, like little baby hands. So... That's not so. I'm never gonna hold. My I had. Hand. I had. Yeah, never I had, hold my hand. We're not going to church together. <laughs> I had Brianna order uh, the soon. only triple XL shirts that we'll probably ever 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 carry because we're like, okay, we don't sell enough triple XL shirts for us to keep them in stock. But I'm like, I know yeah. Robert's coming to town. Mm -hmm. Make sure you order a couple triple X's nice. just for him. So I'll wear them on my skinny days. For sure. <laughs> I was gonna say, is that <laughs> oh even big God. enough? Dude, this I'm wearing is a four X. Yeah, oh, dude. Man. But, uh, I was gonna awesome. tell you. You think I have big hands? You guys know who Mark Felix is? He's yeah. the, out of England. Yeah, dude, he's. 50 years old went to the finals last year on worlds i shook his hand the first time i met him and his fingers wrapped completely around my entire hand like touched his <laughs> other fingers that's dude I for a guy down. to make you feel small that's got to feel fucking weird yeah, dude. just yeah. his hands just yeah. his hands right, yeah. come on <laughs> he, 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 he could never have a career as a proctologist yeah. no yeah. my god oh that's I a mean, horrible some places thought. he'd be popular yeah yeah could be, could i'm here be. to check your prostate yeah. oh He's a handsome man. That's my yeah. lyrics. <laughs> so what's going on, man? I saw you you and Justin hung out last night. Where'd you guys did you guys get dinner or something? Yeah, man. Yeah. We had an intimate did we, dinner. Did the company pay for that dinner? Or was that expensive, Justin? Yeah, the, definitely. <laughs> you guys will get the bill. Drinking Patron. <laughs> oh man. Strippers. Four hundred dollar bill, Doug's at a seat. Five course <laughs> meal, you know. I was inviting yeah. people over. We were getting. <laughs> we were like, Don't worry, we, we got this. We bought everybody shots at yeah, the bar. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the Good first. Time. It's the first time we ever had a meeting when we had a guest, and we're like, all right, can we act? Maybe just pay half the dinner because this, <laughs> this guy eats a I lot. Know. <laughs> but I was actually a little worried, but yeah, he was pretty conservative with his orders. So really? I was expecting he you, was like, being nice. Yeah, I'm like, not I'll have crazy. the whole menu. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not right, as crazy cool. as most people expect. I I eat frequently, but not large meals. How many How many times a day do you eat? Six to seven. Really? Now do you get Do you get like more strict as you get closer to? 
comp or do you stay pretty consistent through prep? It's actually the, the opposite. See, oh. if, if I was aesthetic competitive, then I would get more strict, obviously. And you've done that. I'm sure you know. Yeah. So for me, it's the opposite. The closer I get to a show, the more I'm like, yeah, I can have a little bit more. I can oh. do this because it's strength based. So when I feel like I want more food, I just take it in. Mm. Um, I try and stay as strict as possible until hmm, it depends about two months out two months out then i start to let it go a little bit because i still like my goal this year is to kill these two shows that i'm about to do i'm sure we'll talk about them kill these shows and be jacked enough still that i could take my shirt off on the podium yeah it's like, that's my fucking goal as, you're leaner, as right? stupid as that sounds that's, a right cool, <laughs> that's actually a very cool strongman goal bro because it is. because of the i think because most people when they think of a strongman they think this big fat massive dude and yeah. so to be able to shake your shirt off and look jacked and still aesthetic i think is pretty fucking well what's sick. his name uh well who was that guy was it pujanowski, pujanowski yeah, yeah that guy was he, he was 280 280 and he was shredded yeah the thing is though is we've developed so much like we've all we've all grown and we've gotten stronger as people we just tend to do that with everything so in in my sport the weights have gone up so much have they the really guy, since then oh my god yeah. so what it was his, his maxes are like kind of a joke to us now are you not, serious? not, not like oh, not oh. being disrespectful no, it's just it's just accelerated it's just we've grown we've yeah. we've we've uh we've matured we've gotten stronger and faster um i think the world record I don't even want to say numbers. I can't, I, I'll be I'll be way off. And I love I love every time we it. talk to you. Like you're able to, uh, all the stuff in his so like, something like that. I lifted somewhere around yeah. there. Something. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll I'll say um, one of the things they did was they pulled max deadlift one year, and their max deadlift I and I don't remember the number, it, but is less than 400 kilos, which is what we repped out in England for. I think the winner got like eight reps. Wow. wow. So, Shit. I mean, we, we've grown. We've definitely grown. And it's no insult to them. That's just how people are. Like, that's how all the players are faster. Got, yeah. Basketball right. players are better. We've got yeah. smarter with the type of athlete that belongs in that sport, the way they eat leading up to it, the way they train leading up to exactly. it. I mean, we just know so much. Well, I, there's I, a couple things, too. With, with sports, you have, uh, there's a, of course, a component of how hard you work. There's training technology. There's food and all that stuff. But then there's also a genetic component, which is massive. And when a sport is growing, as it gets bigger, you're, the pool of people that you can pull from becomes larger and larger. Yeah. And when you have more people competing or interested, you now have uh, you know more potentially genetically gifted individuals. This is why, I mean, if you took Mr. Olympia from, I mean, even if you took the drugs out, you know, you took Mr. Olympia from 1970. They, even if they took the same amount of drugs, I don't think they'd be able to stand on a, a you know, Mr. California stage even. No. Yeah. There's, it's just that the genetics have just gotten so great. And, and so you're saying that's happening in, yeah. in, in Strongman too. Yeah. Are you guys just bigger too? Just bigger um, people? I'd say the average size is, is bigger, definitely. It's... Uh the the gap between that isn't as uh, as as huge as you would think. I mean, you go back into let's just say the nineties, and those guys they were decent size. I'm sure I'm sure they were averaging about three fifty, mm -hmm. three sixty, and average right now is about four. So you know, I mean, four ten. So it's, it's a big it's difference. A, it's a dip. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, percentage wise, it's a big difference. Yeah, yeah. it's just. Uh, I think, like you're saying, the genetics and, and more people being interested has really attracted bigger guys and more people. It's mm. it's almost to where now, like, uh, if you want to be a professional in this sport, you actually have to be dedicated at an early age. It's mm. not like like you can just find out what it is, jump in, and then try and figure like it out. Like, I power lifted for years, now I'm just going to throw in some well, man. Yeah, well, that's what it, rem it reminds me of when we talked to uh, Matt Vincent, right, who did the Highland Games, and he says, like, you know, the sport, even though it's been around forever, there just wasn't that popular. So a guy like him, who's a really good shot putter, could walk right in and, and kick Do ass at Highland Games, where it's like strong man, man. It's not like that anymore. Mm. It's been it's been popular for quite some time yeah. now. He's so. also being very humble. Matt is an athlete. <laughs> if if there's yeah. ever an athlete, Matt's one. Yeah, for <laughs> yeah. sure. That's what I liked about him, though. He is a fucking humble we, we, ass. We dude. caught that. Even the sure. way he even the way he talked about his fucking records and shit. He's just yeah. Like, yeah he's like, like it's not even a real sport. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll dismiss it. Do the countries like. Iceland, do they still dominate in the in strongman like they did back when I was a kid? I used to watch. I remember seeing these guys from Iceland, and it was like they were all like the best. Is it 
Is it like that still? Is that do those countries still dominate, or is it changing now? Is it- um, Iceland is is huge with it. Uh, it's, it's crazy when you think about the population of that island and how many people. Are they just come all out Vikings or what? what the, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. <laughs> people come out of Iceland, they're yeah. just shredded. I mean, look, look at CrossFit. Look at how many people came out of there and killed CrossFit. Oh, that's a good point. Wow. You know, it's crazy, and it's it's such a small population. They're just. Uh, depending on who you talk to, like I've talked to a couple guys who train out there. I was talking to, um, it wasn't Thor. It was, uh, I can't remember his training some partner. Zeus. <laughs> some, like that, yeah. some kind of God yeah, name. Yeah, you know? right. And uh, he was saying how like they still believe in breeding specifically for size and strength out there. Uh-huh. Like that's a, that's an actual a goal for them. Like men and women don't. Don't want to find someone She's with got money. Real good birthing genes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So Dude, that shit matters. I was, just, I was just sharing with the boys the other day that I, I just watched this uh, Bryant Gumbel special, and they did it on these three boys, the St. Brown kids, and there's they're three athletes. Uh, all three of them are wide receivers, but the dad talks his story like he actually sought after this like German woman, athletic woman that had this build and frame, and he was a he was an athlete his life in, in, growing up and was really good, and so he's like he totally bred intentionally hoping to have these kids that and, and they're super athletes they really are, mm. and he's trained them since they were kids. You start. You you breed for those those purposes, and then you also add in training. I mean, you've got a serious advantage on the average person, and the rest of us are just waiting to win the lotto of genetics, <laughs> exactly. right? Well, I'm reading right here that the average <laughs> height in uh, for a man in Iceland is 180. Point six centimeters. I don't know how many feet that is. I think that's. Let's figure that out. It's like a uh, six four. Yeah, let's figure that out. Let me see what that. No, that's a, that's five foot eleven. What? That's the average. It's still higher than us. That, well, wow. it's high, high, here it's I think five ten or five nine. I know in Denmark I think it's six one or six two. Wow. But I'm wondering if it's because you have you probably have a lot of like smaller people and then you have just d- disproportionate amount of people. yeah just right. massive individuals. Off but the other moment. thing too is doesn't Iceland have like a long like uh, history of competing in these sports? Yeah, it's a almost lot like. Of- a lot of the sport actually was invented out there, there like the, the stones and stuff like that. They don't, they don't have like a dominant. Um, they're not established right now as they have been. I mean, they have one person who's really good, and uh, who knows what he's going to do with the sport. He's he's very popular, but mm. really, right now, it's mostly Americans, and then there's several guys from England. It it's it's always one of the things I tell guys who want to go pro in America. If you lived anywhere else, it'd be so much easier to go pro and to compete. I mean, I mean, I could right now. I could be in South Africa. I could be in Australia. I could be in anywhere, not train, and still be the strongest man in that country. Oh wow! It's it's just in America. A lot of guys grow up. They play football. They're yeah. athletic and they're big. And we have so many more um, athletic men to uh, to pick from. So it's and there's more and there's more opportunity to have the time and the money and the resources exactly. to train because in a lot of countries like you may not have the opportunity just because it's like fuck i don't got the time i don't have a gym i don't have the money to be able to do this and in america the more you have the opportunity to make more money being sponsored doing you know different sports for example like uh you you're sponsored for, are you still sponsored by uh back by your, your company actually no uh, i recently wow. just parted ways with uh supplement company so you're a free agent right now oh you're single I and on the market know. ladies you guys hear that single. dude's on the market yep, yep. you're a hot commodity <laughs> i'll be honest yeah i don't even know what's the what's that single app that everyone uses oh uh, <laughs> tinder yeah tinder. there we go <laughs> i'm on Adam tinder oh, i'm swiping <laughs> yeah, yeah he does use grinder so what's going so what happened you just, you just parted ways and now you're doing your own yeah um they were they were uh going through some changes and and i was growing myself so a uh, contract came up at the at the beginning of january and we talked about it and we just felt it was time for us to move on. I was with them for five years. I've got nothing bad to say about them, man. It was a lot of fun. Uh, they treated me well. So now I'm just looking to grow and, and find something that fits me a little bit better and mm. something I can kind of, uh, you know, grow into and, and be a part of and, and feel like more like at home. You know, mm. I want to I want to feel like I'm actually um, invested in the company and, and part of uh, part of a family. What do you look what are you looking for in a sponsor? Like what are important things for you? I have to believe in the product. I mean, you can't. It's there's so much crap. Yeah, so <laughs> much. They go. It's a good word. Yeah. There's so much crap out there, and 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 with today, people, 
there's so much uh, transparency and there's so much connective. Ness? Is that the word I want to say? Yeah. Connectiveness. Dude, yeah. You can make up whatever you want. I do Dude, it all the time on the show. That sounds like an Adam word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like electronical. Electronical. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is a word, electronical. Right. It's going to be. Is see, not. See, see, is that's not that a word? He's from the future also. Oh, okay. oh man. It's Adam, Adam be, says words that aren't words yet, but yeah. are going to be words. Well, it's, gonna be, yeah. it's working its way into Wikipedia. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So um, I, I, I gotta, you got to believe in the product first off, and then you got to feel good around the people. I want... Someone who's going to believe in me and someone who's going to actually, like, it's kind of cheesy, but you, when you're, I saw this thing Will Smith put up the other day and it really, really hit me because I've been thinking about it a lot lately with this. The, fi- the flame feed exactly. your flame. Exactly. Yeah, Find great. people who feed your flame. And it, and then as cheesy as that may sound, I mean, it's coming from some billionaire who has a private jetway in his own parking mm-hmm. lot. Like it's, I understand why some people might not take it for what it is, right. but it's true. It There's true. wisdom in those words. You need to be around people who feed your flame, who make you feel like you can be successful in your chosen, your goals, you know? So. I think that was one of the biggest transitions that I went into from being a young adult to a grown ass man was real. I just did a post yesterday about you know surrounding yourself around real people mm-hmm. versus just more people. And I think as a young kid, especially one kid that grew, you know the high school popularity thing and and chasing after more friends and being that way versus ones that add a lot of value to your life. Mm-hmm. And I remember you know very vividly having a circle of buddies that were very close to me. And we grew up in sports together. We were very competitive. And that pushed us through our early years in school of this competitiveness. But then as I got older and we all kind of went our different directions, that that same competitive competitiveness actually ended up hurting all of us because then we then you started to see this like almost I wanted you to be successful but I didn't want you to be more successful than me mm. and that's not the type of people that you want to surround yourself no, right, with is people yeah. that are competitive with you like that that's not a good healthy relationship that's not feeding your flame right. you want somebody who's always encouraging and excited and happy for your success yeah. and it's actually harder to find than you think it's oh, very, yeah, hard. very hard it is it is it's everyone kind of feels like there's only so much piece of the pie out there so much piece Jeez, my English is <laughs> there's only so much pie out there and if you're getting a big piece then it's taken away from me and that's not how it works man that's just really not how it works it actually, it actually is the opposite of how it works the, the reality is that the more it, things grow rather than you taking from unless you're stealing directly from someone uh, opportunity grows like, I'll give you an example we're in the podcasting world and it, there's a lot of people entering into the podcasting world now for us that's a great thing because it brings more eyes to podcasts. It brings yeah. more listeners, more opportunities to hear our show as well. And so it's just a good thing. Now, the I could look at it the opposite. I could look at it at like, uh, you know, with the scarcity Like it's complex. competition. Yeah, yeah like, right. oh shit, they're going to take people from us. Yeah. But that is uh, number one for me personally. It's my own personal opinion. If that's how you think you're a pussy, it's just, I'm going yes, to be, I'm, I'm going to be straight exactly. up about that. Like for me, if someone comes into my space and they're doing a good job, I either A, need to bring up my game up, or B, yeah. learn from this new person or C, just be a coward and a pussy and try to do things, you know, kind of underhanded, which that's not part of, you know, kind of who I am. It doesn't feel good to do that. Right. So it's just, look, it, there's a, the reason why I think humans are such social creatures is because we elevate each other. It's, mm-hmm. it's important for our survival. And it's also important to note, to, to be able to pay attention to when that relationship that you have is no longer benefiting your life. You're, it's not benefiting things. I don't mean by taking things from people because that's not benefiting your your spirit either. That's just making you a a taker and a you know. But I mean just in general, like people who will challenge you, mm. people who will support you. Like I want to tell people good news. When I want people around me who I know will be happy with my good news and will, who will be helpful doing during the, the the bad news not the other way around i don't want right. to tell bad news to someone and then see them smile a little bit because now they feel better about themselves because sal failed therefore you know that means that you know everybody else can fail too or whatever yeah. uh you know it's kind of did crappy. you feel was there a certain time in your life robert where you that started to become more important to you or is that something you're going through right now like what do you, how do you feel about that like it's something i constantly have to reaffirm you know i constantly have to remind myself uh, what what i need to be uh, where my uh not uh I'm blanking right now but um my standards where my standards need to lay when I'm around people and stuff is there's there's so many people who want to be around athletes so many people I mean 
you've got a couple followers on the internet, so you got to be cool, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like a lot of so superficial many, shit, right? It's super, 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 like right. superficial. It's it's uh it's something you got to watch out for, and you got to just constantly remind yourself that just because this person is saying nice things to you, or this person might in the moment when someone asks you like, oh, let me, let me get a picture or whatever, like that can feel good. But that doesn't mean that that person deserves to be attached to you. It doesn't mean that that person should be around you. Most of the time, those people really aren't quality people in the first place. It's just in my experience, mo- most of the time when somebody wants to cling on to you, it's because they're trying to suck something out of you. Right, right. Most but of the time. I remember the first time that I, and I don't remember when it, or what where I read it, but I remember the first time that this like really hit home for me too was when I read that you know, you're an average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And that was like a, a big thing that hit home with me when I started to look at like, well, okay, who do I really spend the most amount of time with? Like maybe if you're in a relationship, you're probably your partners and hopefully that person is somebody who elevates you and feeds your flame. But then when I started to look at all my other, you know, the, the tight circle that I had, you know, there, there always seemed to be one or two in there that, uh, that weren't really feeding that flame. And it's a very hard transition for people mm-hmm. to, to get rid of that. You know, and it's a it's a hard conversation. I just did an interview uh, with Mike Matthews, and this question came up, and he was asking me, you know, what were those conversations like for you, Adam? And I'm like, you know, I'm not gonna lie, the, the first few were really fucking hard. I remember even getting drunk before to try and have this like breakup conversation with another man. Like it's just a, <laughs> yeah, that's like a yeah, weird yeah, fucking conversation. Awkward. Like, yeah. hey, Robert, I know you and I go all the way back in high school, 15 yeah. years hanging out together. But, we had a great run, man. Yeah, was, yeah. we're yeah. gonna have to go separate ways, man. Like that's it's just like a, a Seinfeld episode. Yeah, really. it's right, right. No, <laughs> you totally. Could just, you could just ghost them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop, stop returning. Well, the I think that's <laughs> disappear. Yeah. I think that's how a lot of people yeah, handle it. I think I even tried that at the beginning, and that's just it's not as healthy as being okay. And you're not really healthy. And if you truly love them as a friend or or love the time you had honest. you want to be honest because you think because I have seen this I've I've had the conversation broke different ways from friends and they've continued on their path and continue on mine and we we don't aren't hanging out anymore but still respect each other because how it's how it went and we uh, broke up however you want to look at but then I've had some friends where I've had that conversation and it literally impacted them and changed them like they had never really reflected and the fact that they lost a friendship that they had for a really really long time actually forced them into actual mm-hmm. reflecting on what am I doing as a friend that I lost a buddy of mine that I've been with for 10 to 15 well, there, years there's another side to this too and I uh, identified this so I have I had similar stories to yours, Adam, and but I had a, a little bit of a different understanding for me personally. In uh, you know, I had some friends in high school that I started to kind of separate from, and I started to realize that because I asked myself like, well, why, why do I, why am I around this person if this is the, the case? And I started to realize that I started to derive my own self worth by how much I could help them. So in other words, mm-hmm. I kept them around because it made me feel important because I could help them a lot. And oh, because I'm helping them now, I'm important. And Mm -hmm. I realized that that was a very self-serving kind of defeatist type of thing. And it wasn't benefiting anybody. And it was almost selfish. It was almost like I was feeding my own ego. Right, stifling for both Stifling, like I'm going to hang around these people because it makes me feel smart and important because I can help them out. Mm. And that was a tough one. That was a tough one because I put it back on myself. It wasn't necessarily about the other person. It was about me just trying to make myself feel better because here I am, you know, trying to fix this person or whatever. No. That was a really difficult, that was a really, really difficult one. Now, Robert, do you, I'm, I'm sure that you have a million goals surrounding your sport and stuff, but what about outside of that? Like, do you get a chance? Do you, have, do you give yourself enough opportunity to kind of think about like, what are my life goals and some of the things I think oh, about? Definitely. Outside? I think about that. See, I'm, I'm one of the few guys that I know at the level that I'm at that actually thinks about that more often than the sport in itself. I, it took me a long time to realize that my value wasn't based on how good I was at competing. Mm. I grew up, I, I was on my own really early in life. I was about 16 and I was, I was taking care of myself and everything kind of, uh, kind of revolved around competition. I played football and football fed me and it took care of me. It got me into college. It did everything. So it was all I had. And then when you go straight from football into a strong man, you get become a professional and you're traveling around the world. It, it you kind of base your value around that. It's your identity. Exactly. That's that's the only thing I knew. I, that's the idea of getting a job scared the fuck out of me. Mm. Like, have a job? What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> I don't know how to, to work. What are you talking about? I, I play sports. So um, that's tough, and then to not identify with it, right? Because yeah. then it becomes then it becomes you if you would allow to do well, that. Well, at so, some yeah. point, even if you stay healthy, you don't get injured, and I mean, because the reality is, you you do compete in a 
dangerous sport. You're mm-hmm. lifting weights that are. I know you're a big, strong guy, but these are weights that if you move the wrong way, yeah. I mean, you're you're gonna you can have not, not just a a, a a pulled muscle, but an, an injury that can uh, take away your career. Like well, an there's guys who don't walk anymore. I mean, right, it's, it's a serious sport. Right, I mean, and, every everything is. Right, I mean, so that could happen. Boom! Now you got to figure something out. Or right. even if you're super healthy, at some point you get older and you can't do it anymore. Exactly. You know what I mean? Not gonna yeah. be able to do it forever. So I mean, what does that look like for you? For me, it it, uh, it took getting. I got hurt. I tore my bicep in Africa, and um, I came into the show feeling the best I'd ever felt. I I was shredded, felt great. I was super excited. I was. Uh, just really ready to go. First event, I'm carrying these big barrels through sand, loading them up, and bicep just pops, gone. And I I broke down. I couldn't fucking believe it. Like, I, I prepared perfectly. I did everything. Like, mm. how could my bicep give up on me when I work so hard? And uh, I remember I went and was, like, uh, seated down by the river watching all the leaves float away. And I was, like, watching my career float away in this river. Oh, shit. And I had a, my, my boy was a year old at the time and I was trying to figure out well, how the fuck am I going to pay for my son? Like I've got, I've got responsibilities now. I'm not 17 anymore. Mm. So, uh, in that moment I, I was like, you know what? I, I need to be better. I need to be better than the sport. I need to be more important than athletics, more important than strength, more important than all this. I have to be better than that. So, uh, I turned around and, and it wasn't even that moment what happened. Super cheesy story. I turn around. I'm walking back to the the bus. We're all leaving. And there's all these little kids, these little African kids, and they're fucking starving to death. Like, they've got the, 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 the distended stomachs, and they're obviously having a hard time. But they surrounded me, and they all had this big smiles on their face just looking at, at this giant man. And in my head, I was like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? Look at, look at how happy they are just mm-hmm. in this moment right now. And you have all these great things. You're going to go back to America, and you're going to actually have choices and, and be who you want to be. These kids are finding joy out of nothing, and, and you're feeling sorry for yourself. And I dropped my bag. <sighs> so, sorry. <sighs> I dropped my bag and I dropped down to my knees and I just stayed there for like 45 minutes. I took photos with all these kids and I didn't even want to go. They were like honking the bus horn trying to get me to leave. And I was, I just wanted to stay there forever. What a powerful moment. Wow. Wow. What a, what a powerful moment for the, I have a photo too for it. And it always reminds me of that. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. Yeah, That's that's great. Uh, Those moments are the ones that are, um, you know, we talk all the time about paradigm shattering moments, but it's Mm -hmm. those moments that change you in an instant where you're not the same anymore after that. And many times it's, or usually it's always, it's the most challenging times. Yeah. If mm-hmm. you just, you know, if you kind of enter them with an open mind, and, you know, open heart. It also speaks to your character, man. What a, what a great man you are that in that situation, because let's be honest, yeah, you're, that could have just blown up your ego. Well, I mean, just like, fuck I, it. I'm just going to train I, harder. You know? Right. Yeah. Well, or, or been angry. Yeah. Fuck. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to hang around some kids right after. I mean, I just, I just trained my ass off for months leading up to this competition. Like you said, did everything right. Something goes wrong. Shit that sometimes we just can't control. And I, that's a hard moment to, to actually self reflect and go, you know, there's more to life or look yeah. deeper into it. So what a powerful moment to have that shift. And it's also a testament to your character that you even have that ability to do that in a moment like that. That's pretty. How long ago was that? That was three years ago. Okay, that was three years right. ago. So from so after that, what, are there were there some things that you started to put into place to kind of mm-hmm. set yourself up? And yeah, I I started working more towards education and teaching other people and and working towards that. I do a lot more coaching and and uh, just trying to Get help back. people. Yeah, exactly. And I um, uh, most of the time I like working with like young athletic kids and stuff that there's just so much misinformation and I got it as well growing up where it's, you know, beat yourself against the iron and sooner or later you'll be strong and you need to max deadlift all this. And like, there's so much, uh, bullshit, man. There's no other word for it. There's just so much bullshit out there. And, and it's just nice to be able to like work with a kid who's trying and you see them get that little bit of confidence, especially like big kids. I I was a big kid in high school and I had no confidence until football. Football was the first thing that made me feel like it was okay to be big. Mm. And I love working with these kids that you see, like they're just, they're down on themselves. They don't really know what to do. They're 
you know, gangly or big or weird or whatever. They don't feel like normal. Exactly. Yeah. Normal. That's a perfect word for it. They don't feel like that. Then you get them to where they're sweating and they, they, they maybe suck at everything. And then they find something where they're just even a little bit better than shitty at. And then boom, their eyes light up and it's like, wow, like I can actually be good at this. I can do something. I love that, man. My, and my favorite job I ever had, and I've not had many, my favorite job <laughs> I've ever had was coaching high school football. Uh, yeah. It was the greatest yeah. thing I could totally see you doing yeah. that for sure. For sure. Yeah, Isn't it crazy how the things that, made us insecure or we got bullied over or we hated about ourselves in high school are many times the things that made us excel later on in life, yeah. right? Or it's what make so us special. Common. It's like the pressure Think about cooker. it. Think all the way from yeah. the nerd, right? The super nerd in school who gets picked on all the time because he's a fucking nerd. That's, now he owns Apple. Right. You know? all, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, all, yeah. all those fucking kids end up working for Who's that motherfucker. Now, now, right? Exactly. At, at one point. Or the or the ugly ducking kid that just was not good looking through high school because he was going through all these gross persons. And developed and an amazing charismatic personality. Right, exactly. Well. He ends up being a super charismatic person because of that, right? And they right. end up being this, this amazing human. It's so funny to me that or in your case this being this probably in high school you were ashamed of your size and probably felt insecure about where it's now what part of what you're famous for yeah, you know what I'm saying yeah, like exactly, it's right. it's crazy that uh, that I, I always try and tell kids when when they reach out and they're talking about all the stuff that they're depressed or they're insecure about it's like man if you just understood that the things that you're you're so scared or sad about or insecure you don't like about yourself are probably some of the things that are going to make you so special and unique later in Dude, life there was this right. kid i went to school with who we were at some party and uh it must have been either junior high or, or early high school like freshman year and uh the we were at a house and they had a classic piano there the parents of, of the, the the owners of the house or whatever and this kid he was kind of awkward you know, kind of a nerd sits down and starts playing the piano beautifully, and everybody made fun of him because you know when you're a when you're in eighth grade or ninth grade, like you're that's kind of dorky. That right. kid in to college could have picked any uh, girl at oh, that party, dude, bro. Sure. Exactly. Sure. That's what I'm saying. Like for you know, sure, as a 25 year old or 30 year old man, you play the piano anywhere, and you right. just have you know that's all a of a sudden, dropper. yeah, you're just the man. Yeah, it's so funny. You know, you just want to fit in so bad when you're growing up. Then when you get older, fitting in is just yeah, boring. Fitting in, right. that's birds. A, how yeah. big were you in high school? I graduated high. School 375 pounds. Holy shit, man. Yeah. Holy shit. I think that's the Baby. size of the two biggest kids that graduated in my school yeah. combined. <laughs> yeah, I think the two biggest kids in my school, I think. We had some big motherfuckers. Didn't you say, like, so uh, at Aptos, you had, yes, like, sir. like some of the biggest linemen in, in the school? We averaged 330. History, 330. The line. What the in hell was in the school? water? I'm yeah. so glad I graduated nice. before you guys. We were, we were huge that year. Your quarterback huge. better loved you yeah, guys. No dude, shit. I still talk to him today. Right, so I'd be, he's like I would, one of the only guys in high school that I still talk to. Yeah, right? I'd yeah. be, I would have been feeding uh, yeah. you guys all the time taking great care of you because I bet he didn't get touched uh, in high school. So we were all poor, all so but he was nice. <laughs> <laughs> were you guys good or what? We were really good. The yeah. only people that beat us was SOV. Yeah, Seven to know. six, man. You Seven know, to six. We're it was a powerhouse. Game. Yeah. <laughs> we're, had, we're, we're the best. They yeah. had two of those guys end up playing professional right now. Andy Lavitri, who's uh, healing up from a tricep injury. Yep. Go Falcons. Go so, Falcons, uh, man. How, how, awesome. What's the age gap between us? What are we? How close were you guys going to? How I graduated in 03. 03, I was 98, so. Oh, yeah, yeah you're a yeah, baby. So yeah. <laughs> I'm a He's baby. a youngin'. <laughs> Tell that to my fucking He's knees. He's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're, I'm not squatting a million pounds either. Right. So. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, speaking of that, I've actually started feeling so much better in the last year. I've adapted my training. I went uh, back to a lot of the same stuff I would do in football, like ladder drills, uh, tight, tight, uh, close stance. I say tight stance, whatever. Tight stance, uh, high rep squats and for your hips and stuff like oh, that. Oh, wow. I'm telling you, I feel so good. I'm coming into World's Strongest Man this year. I'm lighter. I'm a skinny 365 right now. <laughs> I'm lighter than I was in high guy. school. Come that's, on. That's, How many of you guys are lighter than you were in high school? Oh, that's hilarious. Hilarious. See? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Yeah. That's good. That's and doing a lot of speed footwork. And I just don't see speed. that with Strongman. Yeah, so. it's, it's, uh, it's definitely working out well, too. Well, this was part of what, what we were all originally drawn we later on found out what a great guy you were but originally we were drawn to your training and your mm -hmm. philosophy for strongman that we really felt that you were a, a much more forward thinker in comparison to the the average strongman right. and so that was originally what drew us to you was this guy really is getting it and understands that it's not just about hammering the yeah. bar yeah. all the time i learned that the hard way too You're i came in and, and the people who were teaching me were all about you know don't warm up warming up is for pussies that was something they would say <laughs> dude why my, would you waste your energy warming my up my coach in, in college said, dear, don't stretch. 
Yeah. What does that even mean? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Stupid. Do you ever see a lion stretch before yeah. it catches the hyena? The like, lions don't catch hyenas, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they're prey. They can eat. Exactly. Why am I going to compare myself to them? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What does that even mean? Yeah. Those are those uh, funny old saying that we should make like a like a, a series of yeah. stuff that your, your old coaches said to you that <laughs> you shake your head I love out. it. I love it when like people- They wouldn't let you drink water. Yeah. Like stupid Water's shit. Water's for pussies. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, like, you got to see people die. Die yeah, without don't, water. Don't drink too much though. water because you'll get a side st- uh, cramp. Like, uh, no, that's from dehydration. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Well, it's limiting my performance. Result, Shut up, pussy. It's funny <laughs> that we, we, you know, you can definitely learn stuff from animals, but I hate it when people try to make it like a direct comparison. Like, I had a vegan once. I was debating a vegan about food intake, and I was telling him how, you know, you could definitely eat a vegan, well planned vegan diet and get strong, this and that. But for most people, they might need to eat. You know, meat in order to maximize the performance. Mm. At least what the literature shows. Did he pull out the gorilla on yeah, you? Yeah, like, he well, did. They well, always go gorilla. Yeah. And I'm like, gorillas only eat bananas well, and fucking. <laughs> well, fuck me, I'm not a gorilla, yeah. dude. Yeah. I don't have gorilla genes. <laughs> yeah. If I had gorilla genes, that'd be cool. And, 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 and who's to say if we put the fucking gorilla on the ketogenic diet, he wouldn't do better? Yeah. You know what exactly, <laughs> exactly. Oh, That's yeah. a good point. I'm gonna hold on to that one. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yikes. Well, wow. so d- when you were in high school, when you were a big kid, and you said you felt uh, insecure, did you get? Did people try to mess with you? Because I know. A lot of times people think that if you're big, nobody messes with you. But my experience is the, the big guys get fucked with the most because people right. want to test themselves. A lot of times. Especially yeah, they... at that age group. You know, um, it was about sophomore year when that all stopped. I I was too big. care of myself. You're too big. <laughs> it wasn't the too big thing. I'm cause... fucking with you around sixth and seventh grade when you got like 30 pounds on me. But yeah. once you got like 150, I'm like, okay. Yeah. I'm like, going to try and outrun you. When you're big and you smile, like I'm always smiling. I'm very happy. Yeah. I'd like to carry myself that way. I don't feel like I need to be this quintessential man. Like I don't have to be this fucking asshole to prove that I'm a man. I don't feel I have to do that. So, yeah. um, uh, and that... And that uh, were you that way in sophomore year? Even yeah, like, yeah dude. I'm, I mean, I also like I. My mom was amazing. So growing up, I'd always had like ton of confidence. Even though I was just, I was, I was super, super chubby. But I had a ton of confidence. Like my mom was always like, "You could be anything. You could do whatever you want." So like I'd go to school like floating, you know, yeah. like, my arms barely fit out of my backpack. <laughs> you know? But uh, I just pictured you. I, I, know, I, I just, just like you look so cute. You <laughs> you know, know, they, they, remember the kid yeah, from Chris. that guy, little coat. Yeah, 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 the Christmas story. Or you the were fucking, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You were the time. adorable. That's why you give me piggyback rides. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But it was uh, sophomore year. I got really good at football, and I just—I mean, I never really changed my personality. But uh, all of a sudden, people stopped fucking with me because. I mean, I was in the paper every week and do, like doing yeah. all these different interviews, going out to Stanford for the Nike football camp, stuff like that. And all of a sudden, it just wasn't cool to fuck with me. Right, and sports rules in high school. I mean, That's if you if you're one of the top yeah. athletes, I mean, it, that means does, does anybody ever try to fuck with you now? I mean, no. You're, I, they used to. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, when I was when I was bouncing, the first I, I started bouncing at 16, and I bounced till I was. I did a lot at 16. A bouncer, a lot of heads bouncing at the Catalyst, man. Yeah. Bouncing at the Catalyst. That I'm is hilarious. You. And dude. that was when I got in the most fights. It was between uh, like. I would feel, and 20. dude. I don't know, man. If I got drunk and out of control, and I'm 22 years old, and I got fucked up by some 16 year old because I got <laughs> mouthy, I would just I would just want to curl up in a it's hole. Not a normal man. size 16 year old. But nobody <laughs> knew I was 16 yeah. too. Like, yeah. Like, obviously, I was standing in line to go to some like fucking I don't know some Ja Rule concert or something back then. <laughs> and, uh, a little throwback. Uh, yeah. like, uh, you're not allowed to wear uh, sports stuff. Like I had like a, a sports team on my shirt. I can't remember what. And he was the guy in in line told me to turn it inside out. So I took my shirt off, flipped it inside out, and while I was doing that, he was like, "Do you want a job?" <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I want a fucking job. <laughs> so boom, started working. And at first, a lot of people people used to test a lot of people used to test me but yeah. then was it always the hell's angels i remember you telling me a story <laughs> that was about one that, time i don't yeah. want to talk about that on the, on the, on the air man <laughs> oh I'm man like, yeah we don't want to bring, bring the heat on yeah. well that we we had some some rough nights with hell's angels there yeah for sure yeah. Uh, but i mean i i've always had uh as weird as the sounds they've always been extremely respectful they've like, I mean, after even after that one night like they came back in and talked to us and everything and so i've i've got nothing Nothing bad to say. Yeah. Please, yeah, please yeah, don't yeah, come yeah, stab yeah. me. No, no, no. Nobody, yeah, nobody murdered me. That. Now those yeah. Mongols, those are the ones. Yeah, those are, yeah. those are the now ones. you're going to get fucking stabbed. Yeah. 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 Just kidding. It's yeah. the only other name I knew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
So uh, looking forward now at this, these competitions, are you one of the favorites? Who are the people that they're looking at to – like who are the ones that everybody's like, okay, these are the guys that are probably going to be in the top three or top five? On the Log Press Championships coming up, I'm definitely one of the favorites. Uh, <laughs> there's there's a big rivalry between Eddie Hall and I, and Eddie Hall is the English competitor and I'm, I'm the American um, – Representing, you're gonna show them why we won the revolution. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fuck tea. Yeah. We drink coffee. You and your horrible <laughs> teeth. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, him and I are definitely. Uh, everyone understands that we're the ones to watch. There's a couple other guys who are gonna come out and bang. Um, I, I think it'll be him and I at the top. And I love watching you and him talk shit to each yeah, other. Yeah, it's oh, so it's funny. Good. Uh, it's so fucking awesome. He gets to great. say way more shit than I do. That's the fucked up thing. Like, if I lived in England, I could say cunt. I could say yeah, all yeah, kinds yeah, of yeah, fucked yeah. up yeah. shit. He said that I was going to f- fuck the queen in her ass or some <laughs> shit like that. Whoa! And I was like, man, I can't say that shit. <laughs> I can't go that far. Like, I got to censor myself and make sure it's all cool. Like, yeah. I'm like saying Did queens. he really? He did. He's oh, like, that's amazing. He said, uh, he's, he's, he's hilarious. That's he's funny. He's a fucking fucking tool bag but he's hilarious <laughs> he, uh, I said I was gonna beat him or something like that something along Yo, those I'm lines. gonna win and he's like <laughs> you, uh, fuck you and your asshole <laughs> exactly he was like you've got a better chance at fucking the queen raw dogging the queen in her ass and he said arse obviously <laughs> arse wow I was like man I wish I had the liberties you guys have <laughs> <laughs> god damn it are, are you guys do you guys are you guys cool with each other when you meet or is it like animosity no nah, it's that? definitely not cool anymore yeah <laughs> we uh, we've we uh we built it up and then it just kind of took off on its own momentum. So now, do you guys tend to go back and forth on certain lifts? Like, is there things that he's better than you are? I he's mean, a better deadlifter for sure. Okay, he's I, I have got no problem admitting that he's the best deadlifter in the world. But that's the only thing he's got. Then you kick the he kick his ass and everything. Else. Everything else, he he's four <laughs> feet tall else. and five feet wide. He's not really good at moving. <laughs> so and he has a heart attack just looking at how far he's got to walk. So uh. I, I smoke him in any moving stuff. Him and I are close on overhead, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take him. I've never I've competed head to head with them three times and I've won all three. Oh, that's gotta get, that's gotta get him. It doesn't that, though. It doesn't. I mean, I'd, at I'd least hash, he doesn't act like I would it does. hashtag scoreboard every time. I, I would say hashtag scoreboard. What <laughs> sucks is is everybody like he's got so many crazy rabid fans that like. None of that. Nothing that I say actually feels like it's hitting him. Like I need to just like go hang out in England and like get a picture sitting yeah. down at a table with his mom or something. Like <laughs> oh that. no! Like I'll be nice. I'll be like Mrs. Hall. Let's just have a photo, and then I'll like Tupac him. Yeah, like, yeah. You claim to be a player, I but I wife. fucked your wife. <laughs> like, like I should totally do that. No. Do his now, fans fuck with you? Oh yeah, for sure. I get oh. death threats regularly. No way. I, they're fucking English though, so it's not scary. Oh, I loved your troll like, post that you did the other day. That's uh, so, <laughs> exactly. I, I was gonna steal it dude i thought that was epic man i don't know where you got that i stole it from somebody yeah yeah Yeah. no that was an epic one for sure so what what is the what is the record that you guys are chasing in the in the log press right now the log press it's uh i can't remember the kilos it's it's in uh, 502.6 pounds holy wait a minute hold on a second Explain the log press real quick. You got to right. lift the log off the ground. Yeah. You have to like roll it up your body, right? Right. To even it's, rack it on your chest. It's almost it's it's like a constant contact power clean. Yeah, like that's it's an okay way to explain it. Uh-huh. It's uh, I mean, people who don't know, it's a twelve inch cylinder uh, steel log replica. So, uh, sometimes we have wooden ones, but um, it's from the ground to the lap is one of the one of the motions, and I separate them in training. It's Something that I learned in other sports is the more you break down lifts, you can separate it into separate movements and then put it all together, the better mm. you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, thank you, football, for teaching me that. Yeah. So I'm like burping all over the <laughs> fucking place. Does it have I a neutral best. grip? Like it's wider yeah, kind it's of a neutral grip, grip, right? Depending on, on uh, how big the log is, uh, is how wide they are. Mm. Normally, they're about 24 inches, I believe. I, I try not to think about that because once you get into that, then you get in the show and you're like, oh my God, uh, they're 23 and a half inches. You just got to oh roll with God. whatever it is. Yeah. I don't even, yeah, I don't even, I don't even think about it. I'll use different logs all the time. I'll smart. I'll switch my grips. Uh-huh. I'll, I'll fuck with myself as much as possible. I'll press outside. Some guys go and they press without a roof over their head and they get all like distorted. They get oh, fucked up. Oh, yeah. I don't believe in any of that shit. I think it's all a mind. It's a mind fuck. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So you you train for the worst, prepare for the to be the best. I and I, I fuck with myself as much as possible. Yeah, so you got to get smart. the log off the ground into your lap, bring it up mm-hmm. to your upper chest. Yep, and then just extend it above your head. Overhead. Yep. And uh, five hundred. 
502.6, yeah, I believe it is. Because, I, I mean, I, I deadlift 500 pounds, and I know how insanely heavy that feels just to pull off the ground. I can't yeah. even bl- imagine what that feels like. To, to roll it up your body and then press over your head. <laughs> well, yeah. imagine see, imagine deadlifting it, but having to keep it six inches away from you. Yeah, because yeah. it's half the log. Yeah, it's like an extended. You deadlift. can't have it close to your shins like you can. With I didn't think about that. Yeah, it's yeah. brutal. It's Fuck. brutal. Yeah. So it, that's that's not the hardest part, though, right? The press is the hardest part. It depends. Yeah, for me, the the once you get up to oh, like 480, 490, it's all hard for me. <clears> like. But uh, up before that, the clean is the easier part, and the, the actually the clean is the hard part. And the press, my shoulders are just stupid strong. I've, I've through years and years of work, I've earned solid shoulders. So um, a lot of guys, they can they can press anything that they can clean. And then, I mean, I say a lot and then a lot. Some guys can press anything they can clean and some guys can clean the world and can't press can't press anything, you know? So how, now how close are you? Like, so if you were to just do like a, uh, like a barbell overhead press, how much heavier of a weight can you do them with the log? Oh fuck. I don't even know. I mean, just straight bar, like out of a rack or like clean it. Yeah. No, not even no clean involved. Just pressing over your head. I'm a lot closer with that. The, 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 I can, if we were doing hand cleans, I can hit like 455, but that's with straps, obviously. I've, mm. I've got, it's, it's, don't listen to Sal. My hands are like an 11 year old girl. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think with a regular bar, it's because I don't train it as much. It actually it helps you a lot better because the whip of the bar, there's no whip in a log. It's soft. right. I would, that's what I'm assuming the, the bar would be much other than the fact that you're not probably training it as much as you exactly. are with tools. So, exactly. so, so it's the skill, right? It's, it's you've gotten good at that particular exactly. skill. And, and, and that's what I need to be good at. So I don't train with a bar that much, but I would say, I can pretty consistently hit like four and a quarter, uh, like for one or two wow. with, with out of the rack. But with a log, I can consistently hit more. I'm wow. not going to say how much more, but more. Oh, it's a secret. <laughs> more. You got to find. You got to tune in to find <laughs> out. Now, is that the only thing that's going on in this comp, this first comp, or are you doing other things besides the log press? Yeah, well, for me, it's Europe's strongest man. So everyone else is doing a whole f- uh, full show, and I'll show up and I'll log press and talk a whole bunch of shit, and then I'll go. I'm thinking I'm I'm gonna I'm debating on Gangster. like what what I want to wear. Like I'm I'm gonna be. <laughs> last time I was American flag decked out, like head uh, to toe, red, white, and blue, everything, yes. and a fucking attitude dude i had like i came out there there was fifteen thousand people in manchester and they fucking booed me so hard i came out to uh american badass kid Uh, rock and i waited i stood there and let the smokes around me and i was just looking at everybody while they're booing and i waited for him to scream i am american badass and then i put up the flag and walked out (laughs) i get goosebumps right now Uh, when people hate you when fifteen thousand people (laughs) hate you isn't that the best they they don't Uh, understand you're making me stronger is yeah. that you the image? Me stronger. Is that the image that we posted of you on the page? Yes, is that's that- it. That's it right there. That's me waiting. That's waiting and looking at these people hate me. And oh man, there'll be there'll be another like five to ten thousand people at this one. So I'm debating. I'm debating like wearing like uh, Eddie sucks shirt or like fuck the queen or something. Oh, <laughs> something. I, I no. just, as much hate as possible. Yeah. I'm healing it up. Last time uh. they, they had a guy. This is, this is so fucked up. They had a guy who uh, got the Lifetime Achievement Award out there. He's this English. He was a judge for a long time. And uh, he got the Lifetime Achievement Award. He's an older guy. He was sent in front row. So I went out there in Manchester. Everyone's booing me, obviously. And I do the log press, and I smash it. I, I hit seven reps at 340 pounds in 60 seconds. Smashed it. It was really good. Threw it down, and the the English competitor across from me had already tapped out at like five or something like that, and he was he was gone, and I was just so jacked up. I looked around, and that the the English guy who got the lifetime achievement award had a beer in his hand. I walked over and took it from him, and, <laughs> it. Yeah, you did. and I threw it up in, uh, like up in the air and oh, stared at the crowd. Move. Oh I love man, it, it oh. was awesome. I felt like Stone Cold, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's some sick. WWE shit right there. <laughs> it was great. You know what though? It's also I mean, it's obviously part of your character and your personality because yeah. it's a lot of fun, but it's also brilliant dude it makes you marketable it works it it's works. brilliant and honestly everyone's having fun I, at the end of the show we all sit at tables and people line up and, and you meet had us a great time my line was longer than anybody's right. oh yeah I, I everyone fucking hated me but everyone wanted to meet me because i i put on a show oh, like people love villains yeah of course yeah, everyone yeah, loves stone cold but oh, the yeah. other thing is is i think people can understand and, and respect when you put yourself out there like that any fucking slip man everybody wanted me to fail 
Yeah. Everybody wanted it. And I put it all on the line. Like, I could have gone out there and slipped, fucked up the log, and had a terrible show. I yeah. could have done that. Any one of us can do that on any day. Yeah. I put all that pressure on myself, and I still went out and performed. And I think that that was at least, you, at least earned some respect. Yeah. Well, yeah, you probably feed off of that, too. You've probably oh learned, God, learned, yes. learned that about yourself. That, like, man, I like, I, and personally, myself, I like that. I have this chip on my shoulder of yeah. tell me I can't, tell me you're mm-hmm. better, yeah. tell me those things, because that drives me for yeah. sure. So you probably have that. What's up? Uh, what's the hardest thing about being a strong man for you? Um, it's a lifestyle, right? Fitting in airplane seats. <laughs> That's Probably. definitely one oh, of the hard dude. things. So, so well, you, you, you imagine if you're, over here, yeah. you imagine because we take a lot, we we fly a lot, right? We travel quite a bit for the show. I could not imagine sitting on a plane, yeah. having one seat next to me, and then you fucking choose. <laughs> like to sit. all that's left is the middle <laughs> yeah. seat, like in between you. Robert and yeah. you I'd know, be like, "Fuck, some old lady." Not this. Uh, I'm leaning on that old lady. <laughs> this one, I had, I got some bad advice. This is the first time I flew Southwest, and I was actually really impressed with it. I, I liked it. Um, first time I'd flown it though, and uh, I got some bad advice from a buddy in in Houston. He was like, "What you do?" Because I'm big, so I can get pre board. So I, I went to the front desk. Wait, 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 wait. Just because you're big. That's fucking right. I'm like, I'm like, look wait, at me. What do you look tell them? Look, I yeah. said, I'm big. Give me pre board. They were like, yeah. If you say it like that too, I'm big. It works great. It works great. So um, I got pre boarding. I get on. <laughs> you gotta you gotta really sound like you need yeah, it, like with like a little. Can we please in your belly. can we please have Doug do that the next time we go to the airport? Yeah. Have Doug walk up and say some shit like that. <laughs> so I, uh, I my, the advice was get on early, go to the back, and sit in the last row in the aisle. Nobody likes to sit in the last row, so you'll have the seat next to you. For, like it'll be the last seat to fill up, and and it sounded good enough. It was like okay, it sounds logical. It sounds logical, right? But what I didn't think about was there were two empty seats next to me when all the other spots started to fill up. Tons of middle seats were open, tons of them. But there was a woman and a child who wanted to sit together, and there were no oh. two seaters together. So this woman, the sick woman and her sick child came and sat next to me. And I was like, fuck, I <laughs> fucked up. Like, I could have picked any other seat. Like, up, I think what I'm going to do from now on is go, like, window towards the front. There you go. That's the way to go. Yeah. That's the yeah. way to go. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think because then, yeah. then they'll look down and then they're not going to want to walk all the way back. Right. And fill yourself. Obviously, up. obviously, I'm not big compared to you whatsoever, but I am a lanky guy, right? I'm six foot three and long legs, and so sitting on a plane is awkward even for me. So the that is the best seat in the house is to go get the the two seats next to the uh, the um. The wing, right? Yeah, right where, the, right where yeah. the wing is. If you can get yeah. that, then you're... Yeah, mercy seat. So, yeah. so, yeah, what is the hardest thing for uh, for you in the, being a strong man? Um, it, uh, paying, your, paying the dues, like, uh, my body has been beaten up pretty good. I've actually found a nice way to handle that stuff, like I said, with the new style and training. I've been doing it for about a year and a half, and I feel great. So, honestly... There's not much to complain about. I, I get to travel the world. I get a lot of time to myself. I get to work for myself. I get to spend a lot of time with my son. Um, what about the, what about working up to where you're at now? Because I would imagine that it, it's probably not a very lucrative sport trying to get to the top. Definitely. Maybe, maybe when you get to the top and you're sponsored and everybody wants you, it's one thing. But I would think that you probably represent a very small percentage of guys that make decent Most money. Most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. And there's guys who are stronger than me that still can't market themselves and don't make any money. Oh, wow. Mm. You know, that's the thing is, is it's not enough to be strong now. It's not enough. It's not enough to have cool guys on a podcast. You got to have people fucking listen to you. Right. Yeah. Like mm. if, they, if they don't like what you're saying, it doesn't matter how cool you are in real life. Like you got to be able to relate to people. Yeah. And it's the same thing with us. So, um, you know, coming up, I remember uh, when I first decided to try this, I didn't know what Strongman was. I grew up a football fan, so I I had no idea, and I tried it out, and it did, it did well. I did well. So I went home, and I had to Google it, and I remember – Telling telling my fiance and uh, I, she wasn't pregnant at the time, but we were trying. Telling her like, I know this is crazy, I know this is weird, but I I can make money at this. I can make this work. Like I can. Oh, I that's can a trick. The family. first day you Googled, you saw you saw I could do this. Yeah. And I could- well, I know I know, I know how to I know how to market myself. I know how to entertain. Like I I grew up a huge fan of entertainers just all around. I mean, all of us grew up with our sports fans, uh, with our sports heroes, and all that stuff. For me, it wasn't about who was the best. It was about who had that fire. Like who could oh, you yeah. see that that was like the, just ready to eat worlds? The Terrell Owens, the Deion Sanders, those type, <laughs> the, the, those type of More guys. More Deion than Terrell, but yeah. yeah for sure. <laughs> 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely a Dion fan. So, do you still follow football? Or are you still into watching it? Not really anymore, man. I, I'm not. I'm not even like sports at all. Like, I don't. I don't even watch TV. I was thinking about this this morning. I was like. I can't remember the last time I sat down and turned on the TV. Mm. Like I just don't have fucking time. Well, how do you? Like to, yeah. Do you like to read? Like, do you, what do you how do, do you? I do. Do? I like to read. I I, I spend a lot of time uh, working with athletes and stuff like that. And for me, it's uh, whatever free time I get. I'm. I mean, though, as weird as I know, strong men don't do this, but I like to hike and I like to just be out in the woods and just sit. And I'm not necessarily meditating. I can't imagine. Can you imagine you're going for a hike in the middle of the woods <laughs> and you see this fucking dude sitting like in the middle of the forest, zen, naked, you know, like, like butt ah, naked, you're like yeah. Sasquatch, real. <laughs> Sasquatch. <laughs> so, like, if I have free time, that's what I do, you know. And I don't even get to do that as often as I'd like. I'm assuming I, I, you're probably answering my question already by me asking this uh, with what you just said and that's you know when Robert gets stressed out whether it be family finances work and you just feel like you're ready to pull your hair out you know what do you go do like what what, what would you go do dude I'd I go smoke a bowl and hike. Yeah. That's basically yeah. it. Yep. I, I I'm I'm definitely not uh like I grew up in Santa Cruz, so like smoking weed was like a huge thing. But um now I do it when I need to relax and when I need to chill out. Uh I also C B D I I wanted to talk about that too. Yeah. Uh, there's a, a, so many athletes out there who will be stuck on Vicodin and opiates mm -hmm. and, and I'm telling you I've seen so many guys go down that path and it it's just it's a rough road. So if you're out there and you're you're having pains and stuff, like think about C B D. It if you don't want if you don't want to feel high or or any of that kind of stuff, C B D is completely legal. It's it's it has no psychoactive uh, properties. It doesn't make you feel weird or anything. It, it's basically smoking an ibuprofen, right, and, right, and without fucking your body up. Mm -hmm, right. mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I've, I'm. A, we're, we're all big proponents of, of the science behind cannabinoids and what they do, and it's legal now mm -hmm. yeah. in California. Yeah. Have you been well, into CBD? Is legal everywhere. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, if it's I, from I hemp, everywhere. It's legal in Texas, which probably means everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If it's legal in Texas, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. no, Texas actually now legalized uh, medical marijuana too. If you have seizures, it's the first. It's, it's they're, a they're like small super, step. Yeah. Small Small step, but hey, they're on their way. Yeah, all, yeah, because Texas used to execute you for smoking weed for fuck's sake. Yeah, oh I mean, God. I'm not, I'm joking, but kind yeah. of. Yeah. They're, they're strict. They're yeah, strict. No, they're they're very strict yeah. over there. <clears throat> okay, so we got we got the log comp coming up first. That's in how many weeks? Uh, it's April 17th. Okay, so and, it's about ten weeks. And then 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 the big worlds is after that. Well, strongest man in the Philippines two weeks after. Two weeks right after that. I cannot wait. Now, is that part of the reason why you're not competing in all the other events? You're just going to go do the fucking log thing and walk out is because you want to save yourself for the... Well, actually, you're, this show, is I don't have the opportunity to compete in it. I don't think I would anyways because of what you're saying, but it's Europe's strongest man, and we're better than Europe. We're American. <laughs> <laughs> so they, you really, they didn't want you to compete. Well, wait, wait, explain <laughs> that. How come you, if you did want to, although it would make sense, but why... We're not a European country. So, like, it's like if it was America's strong Strongest man, you can't have someone from Iceland come. Yeah, compete. so you can become oh. the the um, European strongest man, America's strongest man, and then the world, and then the world. world. And then world. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, okay. it's 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 one of the few actual worldwide sports because yeah. you know there's a lot of sports that like like the NFL or whatever. It's not necessarily worldwide. Right. But, you know, soccer's worldwide, and strongman's one of those 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 competitions where you look at the world's strongest man, you see people from. All over the world. Right. Uh, every single place. Now, you yeah. said right really now cool. America kicks the shit out of everybody right now. Was it always like that or was it? did it no. change? No, for a long time. Like Sal was Iceland, saying, man. it was Iceland. Uh, before that, it was Poland for a little bit. Um, there were two guys from Lithuania for, for a while. Uh, Isn't what's his name? Zavikis? Is yep. he from? Where's he from? Zavikis from, yeah. Zavikis from yeah. Lithuania. Yeah. He's like the fucking mayor there. Like yeah. The, the mayor of Lithuania. Jesus Christ. He's like the president. Do they have presidents in Lithuania? Yeah, I, don't I don't know. know. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea. But uh, he's like a national treasure. Yeah. yeah. Like he's got billboards of him. Just like no advertisement. It's just him. <laughs> it's just him. Wow. It's crazy. And so and a lot of those Eastern European nations, if you are a very decorated uh, athlete, they treat you like you're like you're a leader like you need to be one of their leaders or whatever like yeah. uh what's his name the russian bear the wrestler from uh from russia and i can't yeah. remember his name i talk about it all the time well like Pacquiao. yeah too. he was undefeated for years and then he went back to it and he just became the mayor of his town and, right you know he's you're basically a government official already yeah. yeah that's how it works in those countries it's the same way in asia it's mm -hmm. it's very very common if you're an athletic uh 
prominent feature. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. What country do you get? Like, obviously, you're a big dude, so you kind of stand out. When you go to these different countries, people, I'm sure they, they want to point at you, they want to take pictures. What country is like the most where you get most fanatical? Yeah, yeah, where people are like, oh my God, this is. It's got to be e- easily China. Easily. Really? I mean, the last few times I wouldn't even go unless we had security. It gets wow. so crazy, man. And it's not it's not even like they know who I am. Most of most of the time like, it's, just it's just a giant white dude with a beard. They get <laughs> physical. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. And they're really like really are physical, man. They'll mm-hmm. they grab a hold of you and pull on you and all this stuff. <laughs> there was uh I think he was homeless. I don't know. It's hard to tell in China. The the line there is is really blurry. But um in China uh not last time but the time before. We were there. There was this guy. He, uh, I'll never forget his fucking face. He reminded me. You guys seen Princess Bride? Yes. You know when when she's having the dream, and the girl's like bow to the Queen of Slime. Yeah, 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 like yeah. this dude reminded me of her. He like creeped up on me out of the fucking mist, and he kept trying to touch me. He had black teeth, and he was saying weird shit in that same voice in Chinese. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, oh, no. this is a nightmare. And he kept trying to like start pulling at my shirt, and finally I just like freaked out. I was like. I put my hands up towards his face. I was like, get away from me. I don't want to yell in the mic, but I was like, no. (laughs) In your lowest voice possible. Yeah, as as scary as I could be. And he looked at me and smiled with his black teeth and just kept like fucking with me. Now, Now, when you go, when you go to worlds, do you guys know every uh, event that will be there or is it still, is it random? They don't, we used to, that's, that's a good question. Norm before we'd never know before. Like we'd get, we'd get uh, information like on the way there. Wouldn't know anything. This time we know. We know the possible events, and we know exactly where we're going. It's the first first time in like I mean I've been doing it for five years now. It's never been that way. Oh, oh that'll be so. Nice. You know the events right now. Are you allowed to say I what do, they are? Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got them all, and uh, I know we're gonna be in Manila, Philippines. It's awesome to know. Like I can actually prepare, and get my shots on time, and all that. So shit. they have like humidity and all that kind of stuff as a factor. That's why you I went in? to yeah. uh, Houston. That's why okay. I'm in I see. Oh, I see. interesting. That's exactly. Oh, why. that's smart. So it's it's always got a carry and a load. This this year, um, the carry event actually has two options afterwards. It's either carry with uh, drag, or it's carry with farmers, which. Man, I'm telling you, the events this year, I am so excited about. I was going to say, that suits you well, right? It does. It's athletic and strength. It's it, it's strong and athletic, which is my wheel well. Like, I, the static strength, I'm I'm okay, especially with overhead. I'm really good. But, like, I like to be able to move. I like to be able to take weight and move it. Well, that's what really separates you because very few guys are as agile as you are, you know? So. And have endurance, right? Yeah, yeah. Man, my, and my endurance has gone up and my speed has gone up, like, insane. So then we have the overhead press, which is either going to be a dumbbell or a log for reps. Uh, I'm hoping I get the log, obviously, but I'll be fine with the dumbbell. We have the squat this year, and you're either gonna, your group's either going to have squat or deadlift. And this year they're doing where they drop the barrels in it, so it progressively gets heavier. And it's it's uh-huh. cool. It's it's like it's if I had to choose what it would be for a squat or deadlift, that's exactly what I would have done. That's cool. And then we have uh, the toss. We're gonna we haven't they haven't determined the equipment, but we have a toss for height and then Atlas stones going into the finals. And oh man, I'm I'm telling you, like perfect events. I was perfect. gonna say, yeah, that who's the, who's right the, up your who alley. Are the, who are the guys to beat this year? It depends on who goes, man. Z Z is. Uh, I'm not trying to be offensive, but Z's gotten a little bit older and he's lost a little sure. bit. Uh, happens when you've been competing for 22 years. It just damn, he's been going for 22, 22 years strong, wow. to dominant, like dominating, dominant. Like I have nothing but respect for that man. Yeah. And he's he's gonna be. He's always one that you gotta watch. Like I mean, I don't care if he's 130 years old, <laughs> still gotta watch. So uh, Brian Shaw will be good. I don't really like listing the names of the other guys. It makes it's like uh, promoting fucking competition. <laughs> <laughs> hey, watch out for this guy. Yeah. There's a, there's a few guys like, that'll look okay. good. He's okay. We'll yeah, see. All right. We'll see. Well, uh, do you know? Like, so now that you know the events, do you know? Like, do you have like a guy that you know that he will probably be right with you or potentially in front of you yes. in one of these <laughs> these events? Like, that's who I'm. When we get to this, I know he's strong with that. I'm going to be watching yeah. him, making sure yeah. I stay ahead of him. Like, do you yeah, have for sure? The, the wheels have been turned. Just like that. As soon as I got these events, I I started thinking about who's good 
at what and how it's going to break down. You never know who's going to be in your group, your pre your qualifier group. You never know. So mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just going to show up for the, the qualifiers and I'm going to do my thing and I'm going to get into the finals. And then the finals, those those events, I know who's going to do what and it really it comes down to is how how well prepared can you be yeah. i can't really i can't change what someone else does i can't i can't go in and hope this guy's gonna slip up i know i know some guys who tend to slip some guys who tend to get all crazy and you know like the adrenaline gets in their throats and they can't taste it you know like they yeah. get a little too crazy i know there's some guys like that and and they'll probably have those issues they always do but uh all I can do is come in and be my best. Do you, now, do you prefer to uh, go first and demoralize the competition, or watch them kind of go through it so you know how to smash them? I like I like to go as late as possible mm. for sure. It's always good because somebody will have a unique take on how to do something. Because that's the other thing is is none of this stuff is like blueprint. Like you have to do it this yeah. way. It's not it's not Olympic lifting. It's not de- it's not powerlifting. It's something that everyone has their own take. And and, well, I feel mine is the best, and I, I, man, I, I put a lot of fucking work into how I prepare. There's still there's things you can learn no matter what. Anyone who thinks they can't learn something, they're a fucking idiot. That's just the way it is. So I, I like to do that, but I also like to see a benchmark. There's something like 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 we were saying that fuel you get when someone yeah. says you can't. Mm-hmm. That's the same thing when when I know like say we're gonna deadlift something for reps and I know six is gonna be fucking brutal, but I see somebody pull seven and if I can pull seven or I can pull eight, then I know that there's there's a, there's a chance I could win this. Man, uh, there's just something in you that comes out and it's like I the have extra to do this. Gear. Yeah. yeah. You just find that that little yeah. that little competitive part of you that's like I can fucking do it. What about when you're like doing things for like the deadlift or a, a, something that you you have the ability to stack on as much as you want? Is there a strategy for you as far as like going? Do you go right for your heaviest possible load or a record for you, or do you ease your way to see how your body's feel? That's something that I've developed, and and what I do, you're talking about training specifically, right? Right, right. In my training, I've done. Uh, I've done that. I've done. I've gone down that road, and you know where you like can't stand up straight for two days, and you're like trying to hammer yourself down. I I don't believe in that anymore. I what I like to do is I like to find a nice range. I like to go even sixtieth sixty percentile when you start training, finishing in a couple of weeks towards 80, 85, 90. And I like to hit, you know, four sets of three, five sets of four. I like to hit my reps. And then I like to switch positions. I'll, I'll either go to stiff or I'll go to a rack. Mm-hmm. And I like to move from that. But then what, what people don't do, what, what nobody that I've worked with and been around does is the accessories to deadlift. Everybody likes to do the accessories to upper body. We all want to look pretty, right? Like mm-hmm. we want to take our shirts off and be like, "Damn, that looks good." But nobody wants to do like little booty exercises. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to do stretch, no, stretching their hips and open things up. Nobody wants to practice jumping up on a, a plyo box because that's where you're supposed to deadlift from. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be explosive. Nobody wants to do calf shit. If you have strong calves, your deadlift goes skyrocketing. And the stronger your upper back is and your ass, mm-hmm. the more you pull the weight off of your low back we know these things and if you were to read and study you would you would figure it out but still watching people work Mm -hmm. it's like you're not doing that you're not because that shit ain't fun Mm. that you know it's funny you say that because it reminds me of what what i went through when i was competing and there's this weird stigma in men's physique that you know deadlifting and squatting really heavy and deep builds these big wide waist and you don't want that for you know being <laughs> on a stage mm-hmm. so none of these fucking guys fucking squat or deadlift and it like blows my mind because i'm like you can't pick an exercise that's going to build your physique more than anything else than those two movements right. and you just neglect them they're over there doing fucking machines all day long i think yeah. it's hilarious I, and it's crazy everyone knows <laughs> everyone knows anyone who's educated knows squat and deadlift make you bigger right like, they yeah. just they just build they, oh, they up your testosterone and they make you bigger right that's what they do hilarious man yeah it's build your get your lats you know four inches wider from deadlifts and your waist might get like a quarter inch wider but guess what you still got greater v taper <laughs> exactly right, right. Makes, yeah. zero exactly. Sense. makes zero sense no well shit man good luck brother 
Thanks, yeah. man. We're I'm fucking feeling rooting it. for you, dude. Oh Thanks, yeah, guys. big we'll be time, that. big yeah. time. Thanks wait, for wait, wait, it'll be on Sports Center. Where will it be at? Where well, we have uh, we have inlaid commercials and and the build up. They have time on Sports Center. It's actually going to be on CBS. Oh, okay. So um, we we've we've we filmed some nice rivalry build up. We've got some really cool shit going. Um, I'm really really excited about the build up for this, and uh, everything else will be on CBS. Yeah. Do they? Do you guys do like a, a press conference before? Do they do anything like that? We do a meet and greet. Um, last time I had to be ushered out of the meet and greet. Oh man, <laughs> they, the, I, I, the new rule at this show, the rule is they can't have fucking glass. They need to have plastic cups because if they have glass and I get hit with glass, we're throwing them at you. Oh my god, dude, they were doing what? way worse than that. They Whoa, were doing crazy. Whoa, it, it, they get crazy dude, out there. It would and be it's, it's they, they're really into the sport. It's not. It's 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 not as crazy as soccer, but it's a lot of that same energy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. shit! Well, that's cool. No, that's really cool. Well, good luck, man. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah we 100 percent will oh, be you're watching. Dominate, man. man. Yeah. It's, it's it's ready for you. Excellent. Dude. Hell yeah! Check this out. Go to your app store. Download the free Mind Pump app so you can listen to our podcast in our own custom app and allows you to search the episodes for different topics. So it makes things a lot easier. Go check it out. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.